like coffee? Coffee has been enjoyed since the 9th century. There are many varieties of how to cultivate and process coffee from country to country. It can produce a unique taste in a cup of coffee. In this video, we will show you about coffee farm in Brazil and coffee processing around the world. For decades, Brazil has been the world's largest coffee producer. This country has about 16 billion coffee trees and 6 million farmers who are responsible for fully contributing to 33% of the world's coffee supply. Brazil also produces more Arabica coffee than some other countries. Arabica coffee is a type of coffee that grows in the highlands about 1,000 to 2,000 meters above sea level. This coffee is known to have a more expensive price and has a sweeter and delicious taste. Brazil's achievement is becoming the largest coffee producing country because many Brazilians are coffee farmers. The Brazilian coffee farm is made up of both traditional and modern coffee farmers. What these two farmers have in common is they are Arabica coffee lovers where their landfills are in the mountains. After finding fields that will be converted into coffee plantations, Farmers will plow the fields, level the soil, and arrange the planting media. This activity aims to loosen the soil, measure the distance between planting media and planting distance. In addition, it can make it easier for the tractor to work through the coffee fields during the maintenance and harvesting process. At the Coffee Tree Seeds Nursery, they have carried out various stages of selection to produce the best coffee seeds. These coffee seeds have met the criteria taken from the healthy coffee brooders, free from pets and diseases, have short stems, have good crown shape, and bear fruit. Farmers show coffee beans in this choice in the planting medium. After the coffee seeds are 10 to 12 weeks old, the coffee seeds are ready to be transferred to polybags. After the field are plowed and it has been 4 to 5 months old, the seedlings are ready to be planted. Farmers will unload the coffee seedling tractor assisted by three workers in the back. This tractor will make a hole with a depth of 15 cm. Then drop the coffee tree seeds into it.
The distance of this coffee plant is regulated by the system, about half a meter. After the coffee seeds are planted, the tractor that carrying the water tank will follow behind to water the new coffee seeds. During this coffee seedling growth period, farmers will clear weeds around the coffee plant with a moving tractor and also a rake tractor. It can reserve the soil structure around the base of the plant. Fertilization of coffee plants is done regularly using compass or manure to maintain soil fertility. In addition to being given manure, these plants are also given chemical fertilizers which are carried out three times a year. Farmers in Brazil also apply industrial limestone during the growing period of the coffee plant. Giving the right dose and according to soil conditions can increase coffee yields and economic profits by more than 40%. The control of coffee plant pads is also very important. Farmers are lowering the spraying tractor to control pads with insecticides or fungicides according to the types of pads that attack. When the plant is 3 to 4 years old, the farmer will trim the coffee canopy. The purpose of this burning is to prevent the tree from growing too tall. Burning is done at a distance of 30 to 40 cm from the suits. In addition, farmers will do burning on damage, dry, and some branches that grow wild. Burning on this coffee can be done in every three months before the flowering seasons. Coffee plants can be harvested when they are 2.5 to 3 years old. In general, Arabica coffee cultivation can produce yields until a half to 1 kilo of coffee beans per steam. For modern agriculture like this, usually the harvesting process will be done until the coffee beans reach 70% of the parts are ripe. Then this harvester tractor is unloaded. The working principle of this harvester tractor is almost like an olive harvesting tractor. Where in the center of the tractor contains iron wires that will shake the coffee tree so that it drops the old coffee. However, because of the power of this tractor, it is uncommon for some young coffee beans to be mixed in with the old coffee beans. Harvesting with such a machine can save more time and labor costs. However, it cannot produce a truly major choice of coffee. Some other modern farmers choose manual harvesting to produce the best and the most major coffee beans. Moreover, it can produce the best coffee with a higher economic value. 
traditionally, harvesting coffee beans can be done three times in a month, with a rotation in every 12 days. The characteristic of coffee cherries that can be harvested are the fruit is ripe and it turns dark red. Several processes that must be passed after the harvesting process are drying and roasting until you can finally brew them. Each process will affect the aroma and taste of coffee. The coffee processing while in the garden determines the quality of coffee by 60%. Then the rest 40% is affected by post-harvested processing. One of the important processing processes is separating the coffee beans from the meat. There are five methods that can be used to separate coffee beans. But this time, we will briefly discuss two methods. The first is the natural process, or the dry process, and the second is the honey process. The natural process is the oldest method of separating coffee beans. As the name implies, this process doesn't involve machines and water. Coffee cherries that have gone through a sorting process according to their quality will go through a drying process or drying under direct sunlight. Usually, coffee farmers dry them on a porous surface such as woven bamboo so that air flows underneath. The dried coffee cherries are not peeled first, but are dried with the skin and the flesh of the fruit. During this process, the coffee cherries must be turned over periodically to obtain even drying results and avoid spoilage. As the name implies, this process causes the coffee cherries to naturally ferment and peel off by themselves. The natural process method will produce a variety of fruit flavors, not just bitter or sour taste. Next is the honey process method. The processing begins with the coffee cherries being peeled using a devolver machine to determine how much pulp is left attached to the coffee beans. In Spanish, the remaining flesh skin is given the term mio, which means honey. This uniqueness is known as the honey process because it produces mucilage attached on the coffee beans. After these coffee beans are peeled and dried, then these coffee beans will be put into burlap sacks. These gunny sacks will be collected by collectors 
to various coffee processing factories and cafes around the world.